with our Thanksgiving service, here's a little bit of an overview of what I envision us doing. I want you to be thinking about an experience where you prayed to God and God answered your prayer. And I'm just going to leave it that general right now, and then we'll come back to that in a minute. But what I want us to do tonight is to sing a handful of songs to talk about Thanksgiving. And then we're actually going to look at a few psalms of Thanksgiving, and I would like for us to write our own, to write our own psalms of Thanksgiving tonight. And then my, my understanding is that this is going to be more like a class. Um, at least that's how I'm thinking of it anyway. And so in writing our psalms, I'm going to walk you through how to do that, and I hope you'll, do, you'll write your psalm as we do that. Uh, but then after we do that, I would like for you to read them if you're comfortable doing that. Um, and I've got one I'll read that'll just give an example of what that's like. But, um, but again, we're going to write a psalm and then we will actually read them, the Lord willing. So let's start out with a handful of songs, a couple of songs, and then we'll, we'll get started. Okay. Mm-hmm. Come into His presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give Him praise, and give Him praise. Come into His presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give Him praise. Your voices raise, give glory and honor and power unto Him. Jesus, the name above all names. Let's start that one over again, Diego. Hello. Come into His presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give Him praise, and give Him praise. Come into His presence with thanksgiving in your heart, your voices raise, your voices raise. Give glory and honor and power unto Him, Jesus, the name above all names. Come into His presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give Him praise, and give Him praise. Come into His presence with thanksgiving in your heart, your voices raise, your voices raise. Give glory and honor and power unto Him, Jesus, the name above all names. Jesus, the name above all names. Welcome. Glad you all are out. We're going to sing another song and then I'll share some thoughts with you about Psalms of Thanksgiving and we'll go from there. Thank you, Lord, for loving me and thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole and saving my soul. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Let us all with one accord sing praises to Christ the Lord. Let us all unite in song to praise Him all day long. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Please reveal your will for me so I can serve you for eternity. Use my life in every way. Take hold of it today. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord. Well, thanks for singing out. I appreciate that a lot. 
So I've got a couple of guys that are going to pass out some papers to you. And my goal is to get everybody to have a handout. And you're going to need a pen for the rest of our time together tonight. So is there anyone who needs a pen? All right. There you go. All right, so keep your hands raised if you need a pen. Who needs a... Do you guys need... Okay. Did you guys need one? Here, just pass them down. Okay. Extras. <laughs> Sweet. Hey, nice. You bet. Okay, thanks to my helpers who passed those out. Ezra, Isaiah, Benjamin, thank you guys for doing that. I really appreciate it. So now let me walk you through what you have in front of you. Thank you, sir. Tonight we could do a lot of different things as we think about Thanksgiving. We could sing a lot more songs. We could pray. We could... Uh, well, I could, I could deliver this really jarring, stirring sermon and you, you could just leave all enlightened about Thanksgiving. Uh, but instead, I would like to spend this time involving you, getting you involved in actually get, in giving thanks. And so to do this, I want us to think about Psalms of Thanksgiving. So it turns out when you look at Psalms of Thanksgiving, there's close to 20 of these, maybe even more of these in Scripture. And they all have the same basic skeletal structure. Uh, now, they all look different. The features are all different, but they all have the basic same structure underneath. So what I want to do is take those basic pieces, walk you through them, and my goal is that each of us would actually write a Thanksgiving psalm tonight and actually intentionally give thanks to God. So the very first part of the Thanksgiving psalms is an address to God words of thanksgiving and it may or may not include the reason for the thanksgiving so in other words we're going to start out and we're going to thank God for hearing us let him know that we're speaking to him and, and may give a brief description so what I want to do now is we're going to focus in three different psalms for examples of what this looks like so in Psalm 30 verse 1 can I get someone that would read that so I need someone in Psalm 30 someone in Psalm 116, and someone in Psalm 138. So Trevor's got 30, Michelle's got 116. Peter, can you get 138? Okay, so let's read Psalm 30, verse 1. Here's the address, the initial thanksgiving. Okay, Psalm 116, verses 1 and 2. There you go. That's all right. Mm hmm. Thank you, Michelle. And who has Psalm 138, verses 1 and 2? I will praise you, Lord, with all of my heart, before the God I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness, for you have so exalted your soul in the tree. That is the passage of your faith. Okay. Thank you all for reading. So, this initial thanksgiving, this initial address, Basically, it's the opening words of the psalm where they just say, Thank you, God, and they give a very brief reason why. And so on your handout, what I'd encourage you to do is take, take a minute or so, and as you recall an experience where God actually answered one of your prayers, write down a few words of address, words that you might address to God uh, with some initial thanksgiving.
And this can be simple or it can be a little bit more um, involved. It could simply be, I give thanks to you, O Lord. Because, and you could name a, a simple reason that you give thanks. Okay, you can continue working on that, but I'm going to keep moving through these different pieces. After the initial thanksgiving and address, you get into the main heart of, of a thanksgiving psalm, and that's the story. Thanksgiving always grows out of a very specific experience uh, in which a person was in distress, and in that distress they then prayed to God, and then God answered their prayer. <laughs> Jim, am I going to have to make you come to the front? Sit in between them? Yeah, for real. <laughs> you got it. Okay, so again, this next part of the Thanksgiving psalm, the main part, is the reason for the Thanksgiving. It's a specific experience in which a person was in distress, they appealed to the Lord, and then the Lord answered their appeal. So this first part is the distress, and it tells of the trouble in which the person sought the Lord. And in the Psalms, there are a lot of different examples, a lot of different reasons that a person might seek the Lord in distress. Sometimes it's because of illness. Sometimes it's because of sin, whether it's your sin or someone else's. Uh, sometimes it's because of enemies. Or sometimes it's just a generalized, kind of unstated form of trouble. So lots of different forms of distress. And so who is in Psalm 30 that can read verses 2 and 3? 5, 9, and 11. Okay, Misty. Uh-huh. And again, listen for the distress that comes through in these verses. Thank you. So in those readings, I think if you look closely, you'll see hints of distress all the way through this psalm, where the psalmist is in this really, really bad predicament where his life is on the line even, or her life is on the line even. And then they, they pray to God from that. Okay, so Psalm 116, verse 3. Alana, do you have that one? Okay. That's okay. Okay. Then we could go to Psalm 138, verses 3 and 7 for more examples. Again, just listen for the distress here. So this is one, Psalm 138, verses 3 and 7. Who would read these verses? Go ahead, Ms. Doris. Yes, please. Again, distress. Now what I want to point out is that in these psalms, there's always some specific experience of distress. This isn't just a general, life can be hard sometimes. This is, they're thinking back to a specific moment but what's interesting is that as specific as that memory is, they describe it in very general terms. And so they don't have to just go into real great detail about exactly what happened. They just go into enough that you can tell that they were in distress. And now that you have some examples of what that might look like, I would encourage you to continue writing your psalm of thanksgiving. And so in those lines, take about a minute and think back to an experience in which you were in distress and describe that time when you are in distress.
however you define distress. I'll give you an example of, of what I'm going to use for mine. Um, the distress I was in, I, I thought back to the moment that the other house, we had almost closed on another house first. And then that deal got up to about a week before closing and it fell through last minute. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking about the distress we felt the day that that deal fell through. You know, we called out to God in that frustration. So that may help you to think about an experience of distress. I'll give you about 30 more seconds to, to write a few words down about that. Okay, you can keep filling these in as we continue tracking through a Thanksgiving psalm. But the next part after the distress is the appeal. And this is where the psalmist, the person praying, recalls, this is what I prayed when I was in that situation. And so again, for me, my example is, you know, when we were in that moment where our other deal had fallen through, I prayed the prayer that Scott Lucasen prayed about this building. You know, that God would lead us, that He would protect us, that He would give us space that we could use to bless and, uh, and to serve. And so that was my appeal. Now we can look in Scripture. Who is in Psalm 30? Jim. Psalm 30, verses 2 and then 8 through 10. And listen for the appeal or the prayer that this person makes to God out of the distress. Okay, can I get someone that hasn't read yet to look at Psalm 116, verse 4? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, thank you. And then Psalm 138, verse 3, who has that? Psalm 138, verse 3. Caleb? On the day I called, you answered me. My strength was so Okay. And so, I, what I would point out to you again is that this appeal, there definitely was a specific prayer that these people prayed when they were in distress. We don't get the, the extremely detailed version. It's not like we're listening to a tape recorder of it. So they don't go into a lot of detail about it, but they do give just a general idea of what they were praying for. And so now that you have some examples of, of some appeals, take about a minute, and in that experience of distress that you were in, write down a few lines about what you were praying to God when you were in that distress. And again, I'll give you, I'll give you about a minute on that. Okay, as I said, you can continue to fill this out as I talk through the rest of it. 
Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to continue tracking through this. So after the distress, after the appeal, then comes this idea of deliverance. And the deliverance is really nothing more than this is how God answered the prayer and brought them through the distress. Now it could be that God took the distress away. It could be that God carried them and sustained them and made them strong enough to bear the distress. Or it could be that they simply have hope that in the future God will deal with the distress that they're still in. There's all kinds of different ways that this happens. But can I get someone who would read in Psalm 30 once again? Psalm 30. Were you raising your hand, Lily? Okay, so I'd like for you to read verses 1, 3, and 11, please. Okay, thank you. So again, just notice how the psalmist's prayer of distress is now answered by God. That's the real heart of deliverance. Okay, so Psalm 116. Again, answered prayer. The person called out to God in distress. This is how God delivered. And then last but not least, back to Psalm 138, verses 3 and 7. Okay. Okay. And so, once more, let me reiterate this idea that there, there are very specific ways in which God delivers His people. Very specific ways in which He answers prayers. But from reading this, it can be very general. For instance, verse 3 that we just read in Psalm 138. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul you increased. It's really simple. But that's, the, that's God's answer to the prayer that was prayed in distress. So... Again, be thinking about very specific experience, but you don't have to go into great detail about it. But what I would like you to do is, again, take about a minute and just write a line or two about how God answered your prayer and delivered you from the distress. Okay, so when you put these three elements together, the distress you were in, the prayer that you prayed to God, and then the way God delivered you, that is really the heart of what thanksgiving is in the Psalms. So in the Psalms, thanksgiving does not always actually mean just saying, thank you. Thanksgiving is really more about telling the story of what God has done for you. And that's what I hope that this little exercise is helping you to do, is to put together at least one story of how God has come through an actual specific experience. So after the story, then we move into lessons from the experience. Uh, many psalms incorporate insights, things that they learned about God, things they learned about themselves, or things they learned about the world, simply by going through this experience of distress and then God answering the prayer. And sometimes the psalmists will even offer these insights as lessons that others can learn from. And they'll actually give commands and say to people, hey, do this because this is 
what I experienced. So, let's look at some examples of how some of these psalmists learn from their experience. And I'm going to read in Psalm 30, verse 4 and verse 5. Can I get someone in Psalm 116, verses 5, 5 and 6? Where, Alana, were you raising your hand? <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm going to read in Psalm 30, verses 4 and 5. Okay, it says, and here's the lesson, the experience, the insight. Sing praises to the Lord, O you His saints, and give thanks to His holy name. Here it is. For His anger is but for a moment, and His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. Lessons or insights learned from the experience. Okay, so Alana, can you read 1, 5, and 6, and 15? And a real quick word on that, that scripture, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Um, God is not saying that it's really sweet to him when someone he loves dies. This verse is misquoted, it's mistaught, misapplied all the time. What God is actually saying, the word precious doesn't mean sweet in a sentimental way. It actually means costly, meaning it costs God dearly when he loses someone like you who is a saint, who is a godly person. It hurts God. It costs God deeply. It's precious. You're precious to Him. And again, this is an insight that this person praying learned when they were going through a very difficult time. Okay, so Psalm 138, verse 2, and then verses 6 through 8. Who would read that? Go ahead, Jim. Okay, so I hope you see in these readings, and thanks again for those of you who are reading, I hope you see in the reading that these psalmists are learning from the experience that they went through. And one assumption that they all seem to have in common is that God assumes that no experience should be wasted. That there's something that can be learned even from bad experiences. In fact, it seems like from just listening to what we've read, that what they might tell us is that often those experiences of distress are what most equip us, prepare us to serve and minister to other people. And so now that you've seen some examples of lessons or insights from experience, take, an, take about a minute and a half. I'm going to give you a minute and a half to reflect on some insights that you learned from your story, your experience of distress, calling on the Lord and His deliverance. minute and a half. Okay, let's move to the very last part of a 
psalm of thanksgiving, and that is the plans for future thanksgiving. It's interesting that the thanksgiving doesn't just end with saying thank you or telling the story. Almost every psalmist will take some tangible step of gratitude to, to give thanks, to, to honor God because of what uh, they've learned or been through walking with God. So let's look at some examples of, of plans for future thanksgiving. Going back to Psalm 30. Psalm 30, verses 11 and 12. Who's got that? Okay, go ahead, Trevor. Okay, so especially in verses, verse 11, I'm sorry, verse 12, notice that he says, I'm going to sing your praise, I'm not going to keep silent, I'm going to give thanks to you forever. All of these reflect future plans, ways that he'll give thanks or she'll give thanks going forward. Okay, so Psalm 116, verse 2, and then verses 12 through 19. Who has that? Okay, Miss Doris. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Ms. Doris. Then Psalm 138, verses 4 through 6. Peter, do you want to take that one? Psalm 138, verses 4 through 6. So this may be a little more difficult to see, but this person seems to envision that kings of the earth will give thanks to God. Uh, they will sing of the ways of the Lord. And that implies that the person that's been through this distress is telling the story. That they're learning from them what has happened, what God has done. And so this just shows us that there are a lot of ways to show gratitude for God's deliverance. Especially Psalm 116, there were all these different ways. There were you know, making vows to God and repaying them, offering some kind of sacrifice. Now obviously we don't do that, but we can give a gift of some kind that says thank you to God. Uh, we can sing, we can continue to ask God for His blessing. We can simply say thank you, we can tell our story. The important thing, it seems, is that all of these psalmists took at least some tangible step in light of what God had done. They did something specific that gave him thanks for what he had done for them. And now as we wrap this up, I encourage you to take another minute and just write down some plans of how you can take a step of gratitude and honor God for the way that he has answered your prayer. Again, I'll give you a minute.
Okay, there's, there's the minute. And of course, you may not be finished yet. That's okay. Here's what I would like to do. I would encourage you to... And we're going to sing a song together. We'll go into this next slide if you don't mind, Diego. We're going to sing a song together. It's really simple. And while we're singing this song, I would encourage you to finish out your Thanksgiving psalm. And then if you're willing... I know this is going to ask a little bit of vulnerability of some of you. If you're willing... I would encourage you to share your psalm after we sing this song. And I'll, I'll start by reading mine. I'm asking you to do that, so I'll go first. Uh, and then I think you'll be encouraged by what you hear. I really do. A specific thanksgiving back to God. So we're going to sing this first verse twice because I don't know how well we know this, but it's so simple. Jesus, we just want to thank you. Sorry, <laughs> let's restart that. Maybe I don't know it. Jesus, we just want to thank you. Jesus, we just want to thank you. Jesus, we just want to thank you. Next slide, please. We thank you for being so good. Jesus, we just want to thank you. Jesus, we just want to thank you. Jesus, we just want to thank you. We thank you for being so good. Jesus, we just want to praise you. Jesus, we just want to praise you. Jesus, we just want to praise you. We praise you for being so good. Jesus, we just want to tell you. Jesus, we just want to tell you. Jesus, we just want to tell you. We love you for being so good. Jesus, we just want to serve you. Jesus, we just want to serve you. Jesus, we just want to serve you. We serve you for being so good. Okay, do I have any volunteers who would be willing to read their psalm of thanksgiving? And I can give you a microphone so others can hear it. So Jim's going to do it. Anybody else? Trevor? All right. Thank you guys for leading. Anybody else that would feel comfortable sharing their Thanksgiving psalm? Colton? Okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. We'll go ahead and get started reading these. And then if you change your mind when you hear us reading ours, you're welcome to jump in. So I'll start with mine. It's, I give thanks to you, O Lord, for in your faithfulness you have multiplied to me your kindness. When the deal in the other house fell through, we were dismayed. Our hearts were heavy at the prospect of starting the whole process all over again. We called out to you to lead us, to protect us, and to give us a home we could use to bless your people and our neighbors around us. And Lord, you heard our prayer. Less than 24 hours later, you led us to the house you had in mind all along. You gave us not what we wanted, but what you wanted. Now I know you say no for a reason sometimes. But for those who seek first your kingdom, whose delight is in you, you always provide beyond what we can ask or imagine. Therefore, God, I will sing your praise. Before the assembly, I will extol your greatness. 
People who do not yet know you will give thanks how you turned our hearts to joy in your faithful and loving kindness. And with your blessings, we will bless. Who wants to go next? Praise the Lord who hears the cry of my heart. I was burdened by the weight of my sin. My failure was ever before me. Purify my heart and draw it to you in holiness. Purify it with hyssop and anoint me with the oil of gladness. Create in me a spirit of gratefulness and keep before my eyes the wonders of your love. My hope is in you, O Lord, and in the works of your purification. You will turn my mourning into dancing and clothe me with gladness that my glory may sing your praise. The discipline of the Lord will not last forever, but when it passes, he has strengthened us and renewed our spirits. His steadfast love is found in his bringing down and in his building up. I will rejoice in both. I will praise the Lord with the fruit of my lips and the dedication of my heart. My life will be a dedication to the Lord and his goodness and all around me will see the goodness of my God. I thank you, Lord, for giving me a purpose for being on this earth. In the past, I wandered through life aimlessly, going through the motions, not claiming my purpose or knowing what it was. I sought strong relationships, and you answered by putting spiritually strong people in my life. You saved me from a monotonous and meaningless life and gave me a purpose, which continues to insist that I stretch more and more. I realized that I cannot do everything by myself. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do more than I imagined with him as my guide and helper. I plan to show my gratitude by growing every day and passing my gratitude to those around me. Uh, I give thanks to you, Lord, for softening, opening, and driving my heart. Lord, I was found in you before I ever even realized I was lost. I was always yours. I ask for guidance to find myself in you, to find a friend in you, Lord, and to learn to love you. You gave me guidance through relationships, which taught me and motivated me. Lord, you befriended me and entered into my heart. Lord, your grace is something I could never earn, but I get it anyway. And your love is so good, and you love me as you found me. Lord, if you want my heart, I will never second guess because I need your love. Lord, and I will accept your love even if I don't deserve it. Lord, I am yours because your love is too good to leave me here. Amen. Who else would like to, to read their... Th oh, you can come up here. I can... I fall to my knees before you, God. My God, for you have never failed. You are endless goodness. The struggle through the mundane has caused me to fall. The doing of deeds grows tedious and my will fades. Lord, pluck me from the clutches of the sloth. Prod my spirit to action and let me not fall from my weakness. For your strength is enough to carry my fallen spirit. Your endless ability may overflow to my lacking heart. Your perseverance motivates me to action. You always do for your people what they need. You wake us up when we are nearing us inescapable death. Through all my life, I have seen the truth of your constant involvement. You never fail. Therefore, I will, give, I will govern myself and know that when I fall short, you can carry me the rest of the way. I thank you with my life for your unending goodness, faithfulness, patience, and love. These things you're teaching me, and they're reflected in the world all around me. I praise you endlessly. Anyone else? Did you just get voluntold? <laughs> okay, you just got vetoed. 
Well, I knew this would be beautiful, but I tell you what, it's, uh, I don't know that I even imagined what we've heard tonight. And, and for those of you who didn't read, and that's, that's okay, I just encourage you to voice this to the Lord. Voice this, to the, voice this to the Lord, whether with your family, with those you trust that are around you, uh, or just in your quiet time with the Lord. I just encourage you to give this thanksgiving back to God and act on the commitments that you've made to Him as we've worked through this together. So as you can see, in all of these, there's usually some element of, of disappointment or distress or grief of some kind. And because we've all talked about that at least a little bit in our psalm in, dif in different ways, I want us to sing two more songs, but we're going to sing one, and then Bradley's going to close us in prayer, and then we'll close with song. I still have joy, I still have joy, after all the things we've been through, I still have joy, I still have joy, I still have joy, after all the things we've been through, I still have joy, I still have peace, I still have Let's pray. Our dear great and heavenly Father, we thank the Lord for letting us all come here today to get to hear and get to know you more and more and more each and every day. We thank the Lord for the great and outstanding blessing of your Son who came to this world and died for our sins. Lord, I pray that we can go out each and every day spreading your word more and more to everyone and bringing everyone to know you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that tomorrow everyone can have a great Thanksgiving and we'll have a great lot of fun and family memories. We thank you, Lord, for all the great and amazing blessings you give us in our each and every day lives. Please forgive us for our sins, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. After this song, we'll just be dismissed. And as Bradley said, I just hope you have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the work you've put in and, um, and working through these psalms. Appreciate especially those of you who shared. It's very touching. Very, very touching. So, for all that you've done, I will thank you for all that you're going to do, for all that you've promised and all that you are is all that has carried me through. Jesus, I thank you, and I thank you, 